Good afternoon. My name is Kamala Kaim. I'm one of the Associate Dean of Students here at Fairfield University. I, we will be talking about homesickness and transition at Fairfield University today. Um, before we introduce the rest of our panelists, we just want to go over briefly what our agenda is for this pretty much 40 minutes or so. Um, we're going to have our panelists introduce themselves. We're going to review the kinds of adjustments that our first year students experience here at Fairfield. We're going to talk about strategies for our families, how we partner with you to ensure that um, our students are transitioning successfully. We're also going to talk about resources, some key upcoming events, and then we're going to leave a good 20 minutes or so for you all to post your questions and then for us to respond to the questions that are posted. So with that, I will pass it over to my fellow panelists to introduce themselves. So I'll start with PJ. Awesome. My name is PJ Lucky. I'm one of the Associate Directors in Residence Life. Hi there. My name is Meredith Smith. I'm another Associate Director in the Office of Residence Life. Hi, my name is Julia Smith, and I am a psychotherapist in Counseling and Psychological Services. Great. So I'm going to pass it over to Julia to talk about the kinds of adjustment issues our first-year students deal with. Yeah. Thank you, Kamala. Yeah. Hi. Um, I um, was asked to do this this morning, so hopefully <laughs> everything's all good with that. Um, it's really an honor, though, to speak to you. I meet um, with a lot of, of the students, the first-year students, and... I was reflecting back this morning on when I first started and how surprised I was initially and really a little overwhelmed by the intensity of feeling that students can have as they transition uh, to college. And I'm wondering maybe if a couple of parents out there are feeling uh, similarly, because it really is, it's such an exciting time and it's also at the same time quite a challenging time. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the issues we see with uh, our first year students? Primarily, I would have to say homesickness. They miss you. This <laughs> is, um, you know, homesickness is a universal feeling. And it's estimated that about 70% of first year students in the first couple of weeks of college will feel some homesickness. Um, our studies show that by the middle of the semester, that's down to about 40% of the students. So the good news is it does get better, um, but it can, it can take a while. Um, so that's, I would say homesickness is the um, biggest thing that drives the students up to counseling services. Um, the second one is social issues. It's really hard to come into a new environment without the people you mm -hmm. grew up with, without your parents, uh, without your siblings, your dogs, your cats. It's, it's just a big adjustment socially. So that's another helping students, you know, get the courage to go out and start talking to people and joining clubs, that sort of thing. The other thing is time management. When students first get here, they're very disoriented by our schedule. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on a different schedule. At, at high school, everybody had the same basic, probably usually overstructured schedule. Uh, but at college, sometimes this class doesn't start till about five o'clock in the afternoon. And that leaves a big long day to fill. And that can lead to some, it can really unbalance students. Mm -hmm. And some people think homesickness is really the, just the cessation of all of their former schedules and things that they, take, that they know and are comfortable with. So that's a big one. The other one is just the stress. Um, our bodies, we respond to everything, positively and negatively, um, as stress. So, you know, getting um, your first home or, or a marriage or the first child, all of that, as wonderful as those things are, it can bring stress and coming to college is no different. It's, it, it feels like a big stress load on students. Um, the other thing is roommates. Moving in with a stranger is really difficult. Um, I would be challenged by that, as probably yeah. most of our uh, panelists would as well. It's just a big change to move in with somebody and have a bathroom down the hallway and have to negotiate space and um, who's sleeping where and all of those things, Who, what time people go to sleep. All of those good things become really hard at first. And then the academic adjustment. It's, um, it's just, it can be much more challenging for students and they can be taken aback by that as well. Um, every year we see, uh, well last year I'll speak about, we saw uh, 569 <coughs> students in the university and 175 of those students were first year students. So we see, I would say yearly, about 20% of our students, um, our first year students. And um, if we could go to the next yeah, slide. Absolutely. So, um, in order to understand what's going on with students, I like to go back to the beginning a little bit. 
Um, up on your screen, you see something called the circle of security. And this is really a parenting education course, but I think it helps to really understand development using this model. If you'll see, there's two hands on this circle, and those two hands represent your hands, the parents' hands. Um, so the top half of the circle, as it says, is the secure base, and that's what parents provide for their children, a secure base for which they can go explore the world. And when um, they go, are off exploring and need a little support, they come back in around the circle. The other hand is the safe haven. So, so uh, providing the support and help. So on the top half is, is the secure base from which they can explore their world. The bottom half is the safe, safe haven where they come in for the support. Um, so what I'd say to my students is that when they started out as infants and toddlers, that circle was very, very small, maybe just a room that they were exploring and would, you know, they would crawl out and look back at mom and dad or, and they might bump into something and then they, start crying and then somebody swoops in and picks them up. It's a very small circle. So then it starts growing. Elementary school, they get on the bus for the first time. They might have their first sleepover. Then they go to middle school. They start exploring their world more. And by high school, you may not have seen your student very often because the circle gets bigger and bigger. They might have even have gone away for a little bit or summer camp. What happens when they come to college is that circle gets gigantic. And that revolution around that circle, which used to take you know, a couple of hours when they would come back in, or even at the beginning, just a few minutes as they explored their room, becomes really large. And they can feel very disconnected from that circle. And I try to encourage them and let them know they're still on that circle. They're still very much part of that circle. The other thing that I tell them is while they're still on that circle, what's happening is they're developing their own very tiny circle. They're taking their first steps off of their parents' circle, which of course we know they stay on for life, but they will be forming their own circle eventually, and that will expand, and eventually um, maybe that will include children of their own that they provide the hands for. So right now it's this very early circle of their providing their own secure base from which they can explore the world, their own safe haven, when what they need to do that to, su to supply that for themselves. This is a useful way of helping them to understand um, development. We also know with families, some families are more comfortable on the top half of the circle, allowing their students you know, or their children to explore the world. Um, and a lot of families are more comfortable on the bottom half of the circle, which is keeping them close. So we know what we see a lot is more the families that keep them close so that when they go out on the circle, it provokes a little anxiety to begin with. And then that's just a good, Thing to know about um, you know how that impacts so if you're seeing a lot of anxiety a lot of fear a lot of nerves that's very typical um, at this point um, of their um, process so next one so we are counseling and psychological services we are connected to the health center and as I said we see about 22 percent of the students here about close to 600 a year and so it's a very um, well-used um, service. As part of everybody's tuition, they are entitled to receive 10 um, individual sessions. And we also run groups. We run support groups. And this year, we're doing something called the Anxiety Toolbox, which is more of a seminar, a didactic seminar, so that they can learn how to manage the anxiety that comes with coming to college. So that was developed at, um, in a California university, and we're hoping that that can be really successful for the students. The other thing is I just want to talk about is our health center, which is, as I said, located just down the hallway. And there, students can get flu shots, and um, they can have walk-ins and just take care of their general health. So thank you for allowing me to speak today, and I'll pass it along. Thanks, Julie. So, um, 
A couple of other key resources for our families. Um, as you all may know, if you came to orientation or attended Fall Welcome, one of the key programs that all of our first-year students are experiencing right now is the First Year Experience Program. And the First Year Experience Program is essentially a weekly seminar where students meet for about 75 minutes. Um, and they meet in cohorts of about 20 to 25 students, depending on what group they're in. And that cohort is um, mentored and um, facilitated by a new student leader who happens to be a sophomore, junior, or senior, as well as a faculty or staff member known as a community associate. And so those two individuals meet with our first-year students weekly. They discuss targeted um, transitional topics such as emotional navigation, social navigation, academic navigation. We talk about academic planning as well. We talk about the alcohol and the hookup culture, how to time manage, how to manage your time effectively, as well as well as a number of other different topics that are pertinent and relevant to first-year students. Um, coupled with the First Year Experience Program, we partner with the Academic Career and Development Center, um, which connects with our faculty members. And currently, right now, a majority of our faculty members are submitted to submitting to that center academic alerts based on how a first-year student is performing in the classroom. So if they're falling asleep, if they're coming late, or if they notice that the student is struggling in a particular area, they will be um, creating an alert that will go to the Academic Support, Academic and Career Development Center, and then that center will triage out to connect with the student to see how best to ensure that they are transitioning effectively when it comes to their academic life here on campus. Great. Um, we work in the Office of Residence Life. We work very closely with the Office of Student Engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and living with your students, we have a master's level area coordinator staff. And this is a great resource for you. Um, our area coordinators are our professional staff. And if you ever have any questions about your student's experience, um, or you are talking to your student and you want to talk to somebody who lives basically in the same building with them, a professional staff, feel free to give us a call. Um, living with your students, we have the resident assistants, and these are full-time students. Um, they've been through what your students are going through, and almost over half of them are in the first-year areas on campus. Um, we also, this year, have launched an interfaith peer minister program with Campus Ministry and the Center for Faith and Public Life, and we have one um, student peer minister embedded in each first year area and they'll be doing a lot of programs um, related to homesickness and related to transitioning to college and ensuring that that spiritual dimension is important to your students. Um, and finally, with our uh, Office of Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs, we're also launching this group called the CARE Team. And they're really there to help your students learn how to dialogue and um, talk about what's going on in the world and what's going on in their lives as well. Um, they're a great resource that the RAs are using um, in terms of supporting roommate conflicts and um, helping students develop that language around um, asking for what they need and what their expectations are. Because um, as Julia said, living with somebody new is really um, a difficult transition. And a key part uh, is that we wanna help students uh, facilitate through that transition and get through that transition smoothly. I, I just want to echo that one of the um, areas that I do believe that Fairfield University uh, does really well is our peer leaders. So our new student leaders, our resident assistants, our career team members, our student leaders here. Again, they're juniors, sophomores, sophomore juniors and seniors. They're well trained. Um, a lot of times they share their cell phone numbers with the first year students. They develop an amazing relationship with them. Um, you know, we've we've asked specific uh, NSLs or resident assistants to reach out to first year mm -hmm. students that we might be concerned about. They take them out on a coffee date or they go have lunch with them. Um, and they do thorough check-ins with the students and make sure that they're transitioning successfully well. Um, so I'm, we're really proud of our student leaders here. Awesome. Another office that we work hand in hand with uh, is our Dean of Students Office. Um, our Dean of Student Office, they work very closely with residents, life, and student engagement to ensure that your student is being served uh, at the best rate or best way possible. Mm -hmm. um, if there are any issues when it comes to academic or wellness, um, it goes right through our Dean of Students Office and they're constantly communicating with residents, life, and student engagement. Um, they have drop in hours weekly. Um, and they have a case management service where, again, if there's any referrals or any concerns concerning your student, it is communicated to them. And again, they communicate with the proper channels to make sure that we're checking in with your student 
to make sure that we're supporting them in the correct manner. Um, if you ever have any questions uh, for our Dean of Students Office, when in doubt, feel free to call. As you see, our number is 203-254-4211. <laughs> um, and then, of, of course, the, the Department of Public Safety, they're open 24 hours. Um, what I must add is that we have EMT trained public safety officers. So we have some great staff that are here to support our students just in case of any emergency. Or we, we encourage our students just to get to know our public safety officers, um, for them to, to have that relationship just in case anything happens, um, just in case they have any concerns. Um, as well, feel free to call public safety if you have any concerns at 203-254-4090. Um, I must also add, we have our parent guardian guide, um, which is on our post orientation page. Mm -hmm. um, feel free at any point to check there. It's a great resource. I'm sure if you have any questions, a lot of those answers would definitely be right in that parent guardian guide. Okay. Great. That's right. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, and again, the Office of Student Engagement and Office of Residence Life, um, we're actually in the same suite in Barone in our Barone Campus Center, uh, Suite 96. Um, the Office of Student Engagement, as they mentioned before, they're in charge of the NSLs, and they also have um, master degree professionals working hand-in-hand -hand with our students to ensure that they're getting the support they need socially, um, and, and when it comes to their wellness also, they're constantly checking in with our students. Residence Life, the same thing. In my office, in Meredith's office, um, we're actually stationed right in Residence Life. We're there constantly, and we're actually, a lot of our department is live on. So we're actually on campus here to support our, our residents 24-7 just in case of emergencies. Um, and I definitely have to add other resources, our Academic and Career Development Center. Um, again, if, if your students have any concerns when it comes to their academics or even when it comes to their future, feel free to have them reach out to the Academic Career Development Center. Um, their phone number is 203-254. Somebody shook <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 254 <laughs> Thank you. Great. Um, just to tag on to that piece, um, these three offices, along with counseling and psychological services, we're in constant communication. Yes. Um, and we really want to make sure that your students have a, you know, a safety net, but also have the ability to, to grow and thrive here at Fairfield. Um, and ACDC is their one-stop shop, that's academic and career development, for any, anything related to their academic adjustment issues. Um, whereas student engagement and res life, we handle more of the social out of the classroom concerns with students. I also, uh, yeah, I wanted to add um, that if um, your student, if your if your child really needs um, urgent services, that we do have a walk-in hours from two mm -hmm. to four every day, and that means somebody will be there. They will be able to see um, your child um, between that time, two and four, and um, to access our services, the phone number is 203-254-4000, and it's extension 2146. I also, Julia, do you want to talk a little bit about our satellite program that oh, we yeah. have? These, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we have what we have now, which is uh, new as of last year. We do have clinicians going into different departments at uh, the university. We have a clinician who is over at uh, the athletic department at Walsh. On Monday afternoons, we have somebody at the academic support um, and retention area on, I believe it's Tuesday mm -hmm. afternoons, and then we will be having somebody um, in uh, over at Barone so that we have different areas that um, students can come to if they don't feel comfortable coming up to our uh, department. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Uh, so just some key upcoming events that are occurring on campus. So this weekend is our fall break. Uh, our students do have Monday and Tuesday off. Some students do stay on campus and some students do take the time and reconnect with their families and that's completely fine. Um, Meredith, you wanna talk a little bit sure. about New England um, Day? Our Inner Residence Hall Association uh, sponsors this little fall festival. We call it New England Day and we celebrate all things fall. Um, and that's next Saturday uh, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, there'll be entertainment, free food, um, and activities for your student to engage in and hopefully connect with other students. And this is open to all four class years, but we typically see um, about half of the first year class come through to this fall fair. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I'll be there. It's a great day. 
Yeah. Um, the other major event that's coming up, and which is where we want to welcome our families back to campus, mm-hmm. is Alumni and Family Weekend. It's October 20th and 21st. Tickets are on sale at fairfield.edu slash AFW. Um, it will be, that weekend actually is coming off the heels of our new presence inauguration uh, week of awesome wonderfulness. <laughs> Lots of events are happening that week um, because it's our inauguration week of our, our new president, um, Mark Nemec. Uh, in addition to that, we've also invested, one of the areas that we know as a university is that if we engage our students heavily, especially on the weekends, then um, and creating really substance-free programming, then mm-hmm. that allows for us to mitigate the, you know, the alcohol and hookup culture that can happen at pretty much any college mm-hmm. campus. So every Thursday, the university sends out the Weekender, which is made up of all key events that are happening Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for our students. We also invest heavily in late night programming from 10 p.m. to around 2 a.m., especially on Friday and Saturday. Um, so parts of the Weekender, some um, com- I think pretty cool components of the weekend are Southside, which is this late late night cafe. I don't know if anybody knows about these Yogibo bags. They're massive bean bags that students sit on. There's free food that's being offered. They do fun like hands on pottery or stuff for stag. Um, or there's a band sometimes that are there, mm-hmm. but it's a really cool uh, environment. We also have Fairfield Flicks, which is our movie night series on Fridays, every Friday I believe, and I think it's mm, 10 p.m. Um, I think mm-hmm. it's yeah. 10 PM. Thanks, yeah. Marta. Um, um, uh, in addition to that, there are uh, once a month or twice a month we have late night. It's actually at the Tully now. Um, it used to be called late night at Barone, but it's now late night at the Tully. Uh, and again, it's free food at the dining room um, with some kind of complimentary entertainment going on. The Bingo series, for some reason, I cannot explain it. <laughs> Our students here at Fairfield love bingo. I mean, like, <laughs> hun- you know, we're talking about like attendance rates of about 100, mm-hmm. 150 each bingo night. I'm not sure what's going on there, but they love it. Um, we also have shuttles and shopping um, that's also occurring on the weekends. And then if any student, one of the wonderful things is that if you're ever bored at night, a student can just simply click on OrgSync. There is an app. There's also, they can log into OrgSync um, and they can see all the events that are happening here on campus. And you yourself can also log into OrgSync and the website is uh, on our screen, fearful.orgsync.com for events on campus. So with that being said, so we, we've hopefully provide you, provided you with some wonderful resources. We now want to pass it over to you all to ask us some questions. We have Brendan Hunt behind the scene. Brendan is actually one of our co-chairs of new student programs. He helps supervise the new student leaders. He himself may offer some insights as well. <laughs> um, thanks, Kamala. Oh, yeah. uh, so we had a couple of questions that were submitted. Um, the first, someone is wondering if counseling offers any sort of bereavement groups. The- Yes, we do, in fact. And um, what we do is we have one of our uh, clinicians and also Father Scalise, who um, is at Campus Ministries. And they both, it's a nice, it's a really good bereavement group where they both um, come together. And last year, I believe there were about eight or nine students who were in that, and it ran the whole year. So that is right now in the process of getting started. And... um, I would say contact our office. Uh, The person who will be running that group from our department is Mary Ellen Spitzfadden. So it's a great question. Awesome. Um, A second question is that a care team member was mentioned. Could somebody just explain what that role actually is and what it means? Sure. Sure. Do you want me to? Yeah. So CARE is stands for Community Advocates and Relationship. Educators. educators. Um, the goal of that team is that they oversee uh, a group of residence hall buildings. Let's say it's a quad area. Their goal is to bring together students from that uh, students who live in the quad. They bring them together and they actually engage in intentional, def- difficult dialogues around current events, social justice issues. The entire purpose is to ensure that we're creating a space for students to not just sit in their room and just uh, you know. Uh, be in polarized environments in their echo chambers, but come together and actually talk about really important issues that our country and our our world is facing right now. So the care team members are there to facilitate difficult dialogues as well as to create wonderful relationships amongst the students in our our residence hall hall environments. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, uh, they do have um, bi-weekly discussions and campus-wide discussions um, that are actually in the residence halls. Uh, They those meetings, they're assigned to different residence halls. 
um, but they're typically uh, before our sophomore residential calls. So they have a weekly community night, which all students are welcome to. And we especially encourage first year students to go to the care team dialogue and then stick around, get to know some sophomores uh, for some free food at the community night. Yeah. Um, and also, the care teams are also in um, embedded with each residence hall staff. So each residence hall um, that your student is, their uh, first year RA team has a set of care team members that they can go to uh, if there's a roommate conflict or if there's like a difficult floor issue or any kind of any number of like conflicts and the care team member serves as a consultant and as a guide uh, for the resident assistant to help facilitate those dialogues about um, issues or concerns that are directly affecting your student. Very cool, definitely a very valuable resource on campus. Um, another parent or guardian is wondering where exactly the counseling center is on campus? Yes, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> and even hard to describe, but we are literally right next to the health center. We are in uh, Dolan West. There's two different uh, Dolan uh, buildings. There's one which is the business school, which is down by the Quick Center. We are literally on the opposite end of campus. Um, so we're right at the west gate, up on the western side of campus, so. Um, and then, Julie, you had mentioned the anxiety toolbox. Yes. Uh, someone's wondering if a student has the opportunity to sign up for that or how to get involved with that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the anxiety toolbox, what the student would do is, um, what they would do is make an appointment uh, to see a counselor and that would be it for the individual session. They would say they would like to be an anxiety toolbox and then we will slot them into one of our, um, they're gonna be rotating. Our first one actually is starting today. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get enough students interested, but the first one is starting today and then we'll hopefully start another one in the, probably in the next two weeks, so. Awesome, um, and then if a student is trying to get to the ferry or the airport, does Fairfield offer a shuttle of any sort? For fall break or, um, <coughs> I know we do for, th for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, our, uh, our associate vice president and FUSA, our student government, typically sponsor um, several uh, ferries and shuttles, and they, uh, shuttles to the airport, the ferry, um, and the train station, which is uh, literally 10 minutes away in Bridgeport. Um, and I do, we do also go to local airports, um, typically LaGuardia and JFK. Uh, all that information would be posted for your student on OrgSync. Um, and again, that's typically for our November break or Thanksgiving break, uh, which is a good thing to note, the halls close that Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, if your student has a late class, they just need to let us know in Res Life. Um, but there are shuttles that run all day. And then again, for winter break closing as well. And then I think our last one is um, someone's just hoping that we could talk more about the opportunities for those on the weekends that aren't interested in kind of the party scene. Yeah, so, um, so let me go back a little bit here. So this is, uh, when we talk about the Weekender, um, I mentioned that we send out this email every Thursday, uh, which incorporates a lot of the events that are happening on the weekend. Those are geared towards students who are not wanting to participate in the party scene. And I have to say that we've come a long way. I, I, you know, um, before, I would say five or six years ago, we used to, students would say to us, there's nothing to do on the weekends. And so, you know, by default, they're partying. Um, now, uh, that rhetoric has changed drastically. There's a lot to do on the weekend. Students who want to participate in the party scene um, in a very safe way, they can, they, they're welcome to do that. But also students who feel like that's not their environment, all of these events that are on the screen are available to them, like Southside, Fearful Flex, Late Night at, uh, Late Night at the Tully, Bingo Series. Those events are, are occurring on a, every weekend. Um, and I know that residence halls and the residence mm -hmm. halls themselves, RAs are required yep. to mm -hmm. put on events in, um, in the halls on the weekends as well for mm -hmm. students. Yeah. I would just add there's also a, a plethora of clubs that are doing programming uh, on the weekend also. So again, if your student checks on OrgSync, I'm sure they'll find definitely something that's going on over the weekend to get involved with. Mm -hmm. um, and we also encourage students, uh, we have so many athletic events, and that is such an underutilized uh, 
activity on campus, and it's so much fun to really support uh, their fellow peers. Um, the athletic events are typically all on campus. Um, we have basketball season coming up that is actually off campus, but we have a free shuttle, free tickets to the game. So really um, encourage your student. It's, it's a great free resource mm -hmm. for them and to, to show their Fairfield pride. Really. Um, that's, that's all the questions that were submitted to me. Great. Well, thank you all so much for your time. We hope that you have a wonderful rest of your week. And with that, I think we are pretty much wrapped up. Take care. Thank you.